Nike might have just made the most comfortable sneaker out there right now. Since the first and second versions of this pair of sneakers were so insanely comfortable, can these really live up to that? Well, of course, we gotta find out. So these come in a pretty underwhelming box. This is something that we've seen Nike do on a couple different sneaker models recently. Essentially, what it is, is they ship it to you in this box. So there's no extra box. There's no actual shoe box. You get the shipping box and that's it. You can see the box that this pair of shoes comes in has all of the shipping labels on it and everything and the way that you get inside is by tearing it open and then of course you have the pair of sneakers this is the nike invincible run 3 so i've been wearing these shoes around and to the gym for a while now ever since i got them in from nike and i gotta say it's pretty interesting i mean the first and second versions of the nike invincible run were pretty similar in a lot of ways like they almost looked identical however this one changes things up quite a bit at least visually so let's kick this off with some of the release details these actually dropped on february the 2nd through the nike they retail for a pretty hefty 170 pounds here in the UK or $180 if you're out in the US. So with that retail price, these definitely fall into the more premium running shoe category. I will say for that price, you've got a pair of shoes that Nike has engineered with comfort at the forefront. So really one of the main wow factors of this pair of shoes is the full length ZoomX cushioning that you're getting on this midsole. Now ZoomX, if you haven't tried it out before, is actually pretty incredible. It's unlike any other cushioning that I felt on any other sneaker. It's also worth mentioning that if you haven't tried ZoomX before, it might even take a little bit of getting used to. It is incredibly light and springy and most of all soft underfoot. Like even just pressing into it with your hands, you can feel just how soft and cushioned it is, especially when it's underneath your weight and actually supporting you as you walk around. It almost has a hollow feel to it because it is so deceivingly light. You look at this huge foam stacked midsole and you assume it's going to be a lot heavier than it actually is. Like we all know the more foam you have underneath your shoes, the more comfortable. But with most foams, there's a limit to how much you can actually add to a pair of shoes because of how much weight it adds to the pair of sneakers. Especially, and one of the best comparisons to make would be Adidas Boost. Boost ends up being quite heavy and adds a lot of weight to the sneakers themselves. I think that's one of the many benefits of Zoom X is the fact that you can add so much of this cushioning and still keep the weight of the overall shoe far down. It's the same exact cushioning that's used in a lot of Nike's premium running shoes, like their flagship marathon shoe, the Nike Alpha Fly, the one that Elliot Kipchoge wore to be become the first man in history to run a sub two hour marathon. Today's video is sponsored by Represent. Their Spring Summer 23 collection just dropped and it is full of some insane pieces. So here's some of my favorites. This is the Storms in Heaven Souvenir Bomber Jacket with this insane angel graphic on the back and the front. It works great as a layering piece and paired with their new split black denim with the contrast stitching. They've got zips on the hems which give you more adjustability depending on what sneakers you're rocking. I'm wearing a 30 waist which fits perfect and for the bomber and the t-shirt I'm wearing a medium which again is my true to size. They also just dropped this lightweight hooded jacket which is perfect for the spring season. It's downfield and features the initial logo all over it which gives it a super unique look. And that pairs super well with their new baggy denim. Represent denim is incredibly comfy because it's slightly stretchy so you've got a lot of movement in there which I'm a huge fan of. I'm wearing a medium for the jacket and for the denim I'm a 30 waist. Definitely check out the new collection along with a bunch of new hoodies that they've just dropped as well. One of my personal favorites is the Hills graphic hoodie and the new vibrant colors on the iconic owners club hoodie which personally I just cannot stop wearing at the moment. I'll leave all of the links down in the description, so definitely check them out before they're gone because stuff does sell out. Thank you once again to represent for sponsoring today's video, but let's get back to it. Like I've been saying, the first and second versions never really changed much up. They looked pretty much identical, and this one definitely changes that specifically with the midsole design. Like, the general shape of it is pretty much the same to the first Invincible run and the second. However, this one does add a little bit more width and also a little bit more height. One thing that I also really like aesthetically about the midsole of this pair of shoes is the fact that they added these lines to it. Something that's really subtle, however, adding these lines kind of hides the creases that come with ZoomX cushioning. ZoomX is no for creasing incredibly easy like literally the first time you wear this pair of shoes it is going to crease up however by adding these lines it kind of hides those creases just a little bit you can still see them but it's a lot less noticeable as just a smooth midsole which looks really obvious with the creases now they've kept the plastic counter that wraps around the entire heel area of this pair of shoes to add stability and I think that's very important because stability was one of the main complaints about the previous versions this midsole being so soft that people kind of felt like they could roll 
their ankle pretty easily. I'm not saying that this sneaker is incredibly revolutionary in terms of the amount of stability. Those little small changes that they've made, making it a little bit wider, keeping the heel counter, definitely help to make it feel a lot more stable on foot. So moving over to the upper of this sneaker, it's definitely changed up a little bit. Uh, you will notice immediately once you hold this in hand that it has a very different texture to the previous version. So this knit definitely feels like a very highly engineered piece of material. It almost has a plasticky feel. Kind of makes you feel like they've added some kind of coating or some kind of fused material to this knit. You can also see the fly knit wires that move down both sides of the shoe again to add a little bit more stability to this pair of sneakers and that's where I kind of think that all of these little subtle changes add to a overall much more stable sneaker. Now something that I think is a little bit over the top on this pair of shoes is the overwhelming amount of branding that they've slapped on here. Like you're getting two giant Nike swooshes on the upper of this sneaker. You've got two more Nike swooshes debossed into the midsole on the forefront. You've got another Nike swoosh on the back of the midsole. Nike Zoom X branding on the back of the heel area. And on the medial side of the midsole, you've got another rectangle just full of all of the different types of branding you could possibly imagine. Like they really want whoever looks at this pair of sneakers to know that it is a Nike shoe. Change that some people may like, some people may not like, is the removal of the padding around the ankle area. Now obviously it's not completely gone, but if you look at the first and second versions, it was a lot more, I guess, of an exterior padding, like it was thick around that ankle collar. However, on this third version, that padding is just a little bit more inset, so it's kind of inside the heel cup rather than, I guess, around the ankle collar itself. This one has more of a raw edge in terms of that ankle collar, which I kind of thought would lead to rubbing, as it has on plenty of other Nike models in the past. However, this ankle collar is actually really soft, so even wearing short socks, there's no issues there. So is this the most comfortable sneaker that I've ever tried on? Yes. I mean, definitely. Like when I tried on the first version of the Invincible Run, it was such a big change up from any other sneaker that I felt on foot. Like I usually wear the Ultra Boost and that is an incredibly comfortable pair of shoes. I wear it to the gym. I wear it just walking around as a casual sneaker. However, the Invincible Run just blows it out of the water. It's softer, more responsive, springy. And if you haven't tried Zoom X on, it's kind of one of those things that you're not really going to fully understand until you try it out. What I will say though, is that this third iteration of the Nike Invincible Run, while being a great sneaker, I don't think it's a massive upgrade from the first and second version. Like there's definitely improvements and refinements that I really appreciate. However, if you look at the price tag of these and if you're someone who just wants to wear it casually or maybe just casually run in it, especially since you could probably find the first and second versions on sale, that might be a better option than spending a whole lot of money on this pair. But in general, if you're on the market for one of the most insanely comfortable sneakers that you can buy right now, this is a great option option and I definitely recommend at least trying it out. Now if you want a full breakdown on all of the most comfortable sneakers that you can buy right now, that video's there.